Hi guys, so two or three weeks ago um, I made this Ableton Live template and I'm using it for live performance, uh, for ampers and live events and things uh, for church and I used it in York Minster a couple of weeks ago now um, for one of the events we were having there and a few people have seen it, not quite understood what's going on with it and are like what does this do, why is this there, um, so I thought I'd do a little video on what's involved in it, how I made it, and what I can use uh, use it for. Yeah, so this is basically my template to be able to do almost anything I need to do um, for using tracks, for using pads, for using different patches, um, sending clicks to bands, uh, uh, syncing it with video even, uh, which I haven't got set up at the moment, but it is possible uh, to sync up to videos going on in the background. Um, so a quick run through. So I've got instruments, click and guys, tracks and pads uh, in this session. These two are just for me recording this video now. Um, so in my instruments, I've got a live uh, ch channel for my Nord. So that's just a live input. Mono at the moment, because I don't think I had enough inputs on my uh, interface. But it's a, an input from the Nord that is just sent right back out, um, mixed down with the pads and the synths. Uh, so that has nothing done to it. Uh, occasionally I put a little bit of reverb on, um, but the Nord itself has got quite a nice reverb section, so I don't usually need that. Um, so that's just a pass through there. Then my pads. So these are um, virtual instruments. These are all sampled uh, from different places and different plugins. Um, and they are my main pad bases, things like that. So if we go to say we have the aggressive pad this is that's my sort of big euphoric pad that's going on uh this one's quite nice the fjord it's a nice sort of warm little little pad there um most of these from zebra 2 or built-in ableton ones or a number of different ones from uh, main stage and that sort of thing. Um, but it's a lot easier having them all in this one place uh, ready to go. Now, one issue that uh, you'd usually have with Ableton, which you don't have with main stage, is uh, when you jump between patches, it would cut off the first patch uh, when it starts the next patch. Main stage doesn't do that. You change a patch and it, it sustains the patch you were already on until you play a new note. And I thought it'd be quite handy to have that in Ableton. So the way we've d I've done that is uh, with MIDI slots in here, uh, which are each name so I know what I'm doing. Um, and then on the actual channel itself, we've got an instrument rack, which is housing all of these instruments in different channels, uh, different slots, and each with their own point on a chain selector. Now, chain selector is something you can... Uh, trigger with these MIDI slots. So if I go into these MIDI slots here, say the aggressive pad here, I go to the MIDI file, which is empty. It's empty. All it is is using the envelope here. I'm going to here, chain selector. So the chain selector in the master sort of instrument rack uh, is set to two here, not one, two. So we go to here, you can see that the aggressive pad, which is the one we were on then, is set at number two. So when it triggers that MIDI, it will move the chain selector to number two and it will play that patch. Now, why it's handy is because it does uh, sustain the pad from before. So say I'm on my nice Fjord pad here, and I want to move into a more sort of aggressive pad. If I stick my sustain pedal down here and have those going, trigger that aggressive pad, it's triggered it, but it's still sustained that Fjord pad from before. And I can play over the top of this original pad. Play over the top of that pad and it doesn't leave the original pad until I take my foot off the sustain. And then we're into the next pad. So it's seamless patch switch in there. Um, I know a lot of people have done videos about it. Um, but yeah, that's just a very quick explanation as to how I've set that up. So that's my pads, and it does actually create little sub 
tracks for you as well to set levels and pan if you need to solo certain ones for troubleshooting things like that don't really use that um, because they're all sort of leveled roughly the same so I never really have to change much with that then I've got synth uh, at the moment I only have one synth going on here which is the little arpeggio for this tune Ooh, take the track up Yeah, so that's what that's going on. That's just a little. It's got a bit of delays going on there, and a lot of shimmer at the moment for some reason. Um, let's hit that a little bit. Uh, and then I've got this extra track here, which I think I was just using to work on sounds. So that's just a, a an in progress track really. Um, so that's the instruments, and that all boils down to one track going out of my outputs one and two. So I've got stereo keys there. Um, clicking guides. So this is the next one. So another thing I'm using this live uh, setup for is for tracks. So the click and the guides are going just to the in-ear monitors of the band and the track here, the red one, uh, is going to the front of house. Um, may also go to some of the in-ears as well if we want some ambient sound. Um, this click and guide is made up of two tracks click track and guides this is just an extra extra bit that I was adding in um, and these are all separate sort of audio snippets from a from a master click track and this is just the boop 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 sort of sound that's going on um, and this guide here is just people saying verse chorus that sort of thing um, so if I just fire off a track so we're going to verse here Input right into me. There we go. Into the chorus. Turn all those track levels up. There we go. So that is our track playing here. All the different sounds we've got. We don't have all of them. Um, so drums there and bass are muted as we don't need those. And the clicks firing away there, going out of. Number four. A little too loud. Hit that a bit. Um, so yeah, and that will just seamlessly move on to the next section. We can jump back. We can go back to sections we've already done. We can repeat sections, um, and it's just really helpful to have them in. Really helpful to have them in little groups there, um, so that we can go back and go back through things that we need to later on. Um, so yeah, so that is the click track going out of four. So that's going to the headphones and the track going out of three, which is going to the front of the house. Um, and yeah, you've got all these separate tracks in here with all the separate audio files. Choir here, don't need that. That's all muted. Uh, bass, drums, they're all gone. And they're all going to this group, which is going out of three. So that's our master track track, if you like. So those two are quite um, CPU hungry. Um, they will really fire this meter up here when it when it's going so i have to be quite easy on my pads sometimes i'll just stick to the the live piano pass through um most of the time it works fine i can have pads and pianos and tracks going uh but that one in particular is quite heavy there is a lot of stuff all going on at once and it's all syncing up and all going out different outputs and all sorts of stuff so uh, i try to be a little bit easy on it when we're doing that one. um next track pads so these are great. These are just little sort of emergency pads, if you like, and they are dr little drones. So if we're going in D, got that one there. Take the channel up a bit. So it's just a drone in D. Occasionally it puts some major sevens and the odd sharp eleven in, and it just is a nice sort of warm background bed for me to either play piano over in. You know, low key intros or for key transitions. So if the if I pick a note that's common to both keys, it it works quite well to sort of melt melt into other keys and that sort of thing. And these are about seven minutes, seven minute loops. So I very rarely need to loop them. They they usually done their job by the time we get to seven minutes. Um, so yeah, they're there for there. We've got different keys. 
um, different sounds. So that, these are the water pads, um, but these will go to bridge. This one's a slightly bigger one, a bit more shimmery. Um, and yeah, they're by Carl Vercade. So I'm going to uh, post a little link to the band camp where they are freely available for this sort of thing. Uh, and they're great. They're really helpful, and really handy uh, to fill those gaps. So that's your pads. Right. So that's all of my tracks. That's the four basic tracks that are all running out of almost separate outputs. These are just being mixed down to a stereo output there. Uh, and your four and your three. So those are your tracks. Then I've got some sends. Uh, that is my very basic setup there with the pads, the tracks, and the instruments. Uh, if I want to add an extra level of things, I can uh, add some reverb, some shimmers, some delays, and things through sends. That's what these are down here, if you're not aware of how Ableton works with sends. So if I go into my instruments here, my pad here, I've got A, B, and C. D here is just for me recording this video so that I can record everything. So they respond, uh, correspond to up here, A, B, and C. This is just a bit of piano hall reverb sort of thing. This is a chorus which I don't actually use all that much. Um, in fact, I think I've disabled it. I have, yeah. Um, and then up here, I've got the full shimmer. So this is really the, the big one. Again, very, well, not very CPU hungry actually, but it, it, um, it, it, yeah, more than if you weren't using it. Um, and if I explain sort of how this works, so shimmer reverb is essentially a delay and a pitch shift and a reverb all in one. Um, and it creates another sort of octave layer above that's very shimmery and shimmer reverb and very sort of warm and, and airy. Uh, so that one is at C and currently it's on zero. So if I start playing a, a pad, let's go to a deep fjord pad. Um, okay. So there's my pad. And you can hear it's just the pad. There's nothing else going on. That's all I'm playing, just the pad. I add this send here. You're going to hear an another octave above that's shimmering over the top. There we are, slowly coming in. I'll take it up to full so you can really hear what's going on. It's dinner. I take my hands off and it really decays for ages. It's a really long, um, shimmery thing. And yeah, this is great. This is, I use this a lot. It's quite nice, even in just small amounts on a piano in a, in a lead line or that sort of thing. Not so much in Ampersand. I don't really use it there, but for the church stuff, certainly it's, uh, it's all over the place. But for the Minster a couple of weeks ago, it wasn't York Minster wasn't really necessary because, of course, you've got a whole natural cathedral reverb there. Um, so you don't really need the plugins to do it for you. And I know the Shimmer is another, another thing altogether, but it was just getting a bit too much. But uh, yeah, that I use that a lot. Um, that one and the chorus and the piano Shimmer are just nice little additions that aren't necessary. You don't need them, but... Um, can really take your playing up to another another uh, level in texture and layering and things so there we go there we have our instruments we have our clicks and guides our tracks our pads and our sends. now the next thing is you've got all this going on what you don't want to have to do now is while you're playing be leaning over scrolling using a mouse clicking things and you know, there's so many things that could go wrong there, or you could accidentally choose the wrong thing, or um, knock a, a fader down by accident, or, you know, all that sort of thing. So, uh, over the last week or so, maybe two weeks, I've been working on this interface on my iPad that I can use to control all of the faders and the dials and uh, trigger pads and patch changes in Ableton from the iPad. And it's using something called Touch OSC. Here, so I've got my editor here. This is the sort of environment I've created with buttons and faders and dials and all sorts of stuff. So, this section here is the patches, that's how I change my patches. This section here is the faders for clicks and cues, tracks, um, the pads, and the master keys that's the Nord included, and then separate ones for pads and leads as well. 
dials for my shimmers that we were looking at before, the A, Bs and Cs. This one is actually A and this one is C, I think, because um, B wasn't being used. Firing off the tracks, so that's the name of the track that we were using. This jumps to the next section if we need to, and this stops them all together. This stops everything, so it'll stop all the sound uh, and cancel it all for me to then start again if I need to. Just your standard panic button. Um, this pad stop is stopping these pads, which is the pads we looked at before in the different keys. And pressing these will just fire those off. Some dials for the shimmer and some dials for the verb, uh, which I think I've already explained. Yeah, a uh, bit of a clock there, um, which is not actually 1.30, but there you go. Um, and the battery. And then I've got a second page here, which is faders for the track. And when that's in the iPad, uh, it looks a bit like this. Um, and I can use this with Ableton to fire a lot of things off. I can choose my pads, uh, patches, sorry. We'll go to the aggressive, you see it jumps over here to the aggressive pad. Okay. Oh, I'll take that uh, shimmer down there. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> that is why you don't have the shimmer on full all the time. Um, so that's the aggressive pad there. Uh, and then you can jump to the Fjord pad. What a business. Um, so that's a really quick, easy patch change, as if it was you know built into the keyboard I'm using. Then I've got my pads. So we fire off a D down the bottom here. It's going to jump to D here and play this here. So that's all fine. It's all good. Um, I can then stop the pads with here, and it'll stop them in time with the track. The faders, if we move over here to this send section, you're going to see these. Yep, there you go. See the shimmer moves, and then the piano big verb on the Nord input moves too. Then your faders, uh, different faders for different things, moving on here, all changing around. And then my second page here, which is actually going to just change these on the track here. You see them all move around and change there. So if we're playing this track say we're on here and we want to live change what's going on just change the tracks up here. we want to change what's going on we don't want anything in or we want just the percussion we want just the acoustic and the electric Put some strings in you know we can cut things out live we can change what we're doing live and that's really important um, to have that's a really important flexibility to have when you're doing live because it's quite hard to to do anything like that if uh, you're using whole tracks or if you're mixing everything down to a stereo track so yes it's quite a heavy session but it's a lot handier to be able to use that and change things on the fly yeah so that's that that is the session that is what I'm using um, and that is hopefully explained a bit about what's going on how it's all working um, yeah if you were to try and create your own um, there's some little pointers there and, and little tips so great I'm gonna do a little video uh, at some point on how to put these together how to put these tracks in um, and how to get them to follow on uh, straight after each other uh, which took me quite a bit of time to work out but now seems to run quite smoothly and how to uh, you know patch them all through and and all that business so yeah that is the session uh, thanks for watching <laughs>